Hello everybody, welcome to the Crow Show. I've got a bunch of pickups to go over. I've got a small pinball machine update. I'm probably going to ramble on a little bit about DLC versus physical copies. And I do have a shout out for somebody I've been following for over two years. And guess what? I finally put together a proper intro for this series. Alright, the first thing we'll cover is pickups. Um, no particular order. Uh, I'll try to do them in the order I got them, but I'll probably mix things up a bit. I went to uh, Fry's, picked up a couple uh, more Blu-rays. They were pretty cheap. Uh, for $8.99, I got the Blu-ray of Dude, Where's My Car? And I, I love this movie. It kind of reminds me of like a, a 90s version of of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, even though this may have come out in 2000. <laughs> uh, 2001, actually. Uh, it reminds it, it's kind of reminds me in the vein of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but kind of really random and weird, too. Uh, there's only one part in this movie I kind of don't like, and that's when they do this weird impromptu music video that really has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. But other than that, it's a pretty damn funny movie. Also got uh, The Incredible Hulk. This was eleven ninety nine. Uh, of course, seeing The Avengers again made me want to kind of pick up this movie. I got, was looking for this on, uh, for a decent price on DVD for a while. I could never find it for a de decent price on DVD. But then I found it on Blu-ray for uh, twelve ninety nine. so I figured I'd pick that up. Hulk being my favorite superhero comic book character. So I'm interested in that, of course. Um... My wife, oh, before that, still got one more thing from Fry's, and that is they finally got uh, Retro Gamer Magazine issue 101, and I said I would pick this up, reason being, and this was $9.99 because it's coming from the UK, so let's uh, thumb through here, because it's got some YouTubers I follow in here. We have, um, there's Eprom, um, nine, I guess, uh, Steve Benway. And Retro Gamer VX are all in this issue uh, talking about the what the hell are they talking about the the BBC Micro, which is a really a computer. I really have nothing. No, in uh, I really don't know anything about it. Never came out here as a BBC, you know. <laughs> uh, so that's why I had to pick that up. That's why I was kind of going to Fry's looking for that issue, and uh, you know it, they've got the, that issue maybe a month or two ago. <laughs> Just came out for me here, so. Um, yeah, uh, excuse me for a minute. <coughs> That's better. I've been wanting to cough, but I've been trying to talk over it. But. Um, my wife went to uh, Goodwill, picked up one game at Goodwill, Mortal Kombat for the Game Gear in the box even. This was uh, $1.99. The box is in pretty decent shape for Goodwill. Uh, looks like we got the manual in there. And... Uh, the game cartridge without the uh, the plastic case, but wow, pretty good for Goodwill. Um, even having the box and the, the manual, that's uh, pretty damn good. And these these stickers I can get off fairly uh, painlessly without doing any damage. So got that. Uh, she went to Toys R Us, uh, picked up a bunch of games. Now I know the prices on these are not what they paid. She paid for them because they were like forty percent off. Uh, except for one of them. I think this one, Legend of Zelda Spirit Track, she picked up for $10. I might be mistaken on that. But it uh, seems pretty interesting. I may play that one day. I don't know. I've been on the Vita so long, I never really go go to the DS anymore. Uh, but we have it. If I want to go back and play a Zelda game, got one. That seems pretty interesting to me. Um Atari's Greatest Hits Volume 2. Now, uh, she picked this up 40% off. What was it, like 5 bucks or something? I, I don't know. She said, you know what, maybe it was more than that because I believe she said she paid uh, $4 for these. So maybe it was 60% off. Um, this has got like 50 games in there. And they're all from like the arcade versions. They're the 2600 versions. And there's also, it says, a Atari 400 emulator that you could write and execute your own programs, which seems really interesting. But what really seems interesting to me is that there's some paddle games in here, like Circus Atari, and it'd be interesting to see if you could use the stylus to control the um, 
the things for the, the, the paddle games, because that would be a pretty good substitution for the paddle. Um, not as fun to me, but uh, like Arkanoid. Arkanoid on the DS where you could use the, the stylus to drag the thing back and forth. It, that worked pretty good. Um, she picked up this one because it seemed really interesting to her. Princess Isabella, A Witch's Curse. Again, I think that was $4, marked as $10, but it's really, she paid 4 It looks like there's mini, oh, it's one of those hidden object games. That's why she picked that up. She loves those. And uh, she picked up Centipede Infestation, which I, I kind of vaguely remember seeing something about uh, some time ago when this came out. And it seemed pretty interesting, but I never really gave it a second thought. But uh, now that I have it for 4 bucks, might have to check that out. And, uh, oh, got this from Amazon. Now, okay, um, I went to, when I, uh, was at the Midwest Gaming Classic, there was a game, and I actually mentioned it in the video, if you saw my video, and it was, had a really weird title, and I was like, I might have to check that one out, but I passed on it, because it was $30, and when I came back, it was gone. So, um, for some reason, I was thinking, hey, I wonder if I could find that game on eBay. So, I looked on eBay... And people wanted $80 for it. And I was like, that's crazy. And then I went to Amazon. And people on Amazon, there was two copies on Amazon complete for about $30. So I was like, hey, that's that's pretty awesome. I'm probably going to buy one of these. And there was two of them. And I read the descriptions. They were both kind of the same thing, uh, kind of description. Except one said, oh, if you pay, if you get expedited shipping, I'll throw in an extra game. Oh, okay. So expedited shipping was only three dollars more. So oh, I'll get three expedited shipping and pay for that. So what they sent me was this was the game I wanted, Revengers of Vengeance. I wanted the game just because the title of the game is so damn ridiculous. And they also threw in, of course, the cheapest uh, Sega CD game I believe there is, NHL '94. However, <clears throat> um, they packed this. They didn't put it in a box. They put it in a bubble sealer envelope. Um, now, granted, they put, like, a ton of bubble wrap around it. But they had the games together. Bubble wrap, like, a couple times. And then in a bubble sealer. So what happened was, of course, both the cases broke in transit. Uh, this one... Actually, I switched the cases because... Uh, the one that this, the case that this one was in was actually in worse shape than this one. Uh, if you can see, I've kind of glued it back together, but this whole bottom piece was broken off. And you can, you can see where I've glued that back together. I've glued it together in several spots, kind of got it in, in work in uh, decent shape. But this is like an extra copy for me now. Uh, this one was broken, but it was just the hinge part. So I've managed to glue that back together there and it, it's working pretty well, um, haven't had a problem with that since. The only other problem, and I can't remember if this was actually in the description or not, uh, but this manual has water damage. Not too bad. You probably can't even tell that bad from the uh, um, the thing. But if I get the light reflecting, you can see how it's kind of wavy. Uh, some of the page pages were sticking together. You could see even better here. Uh, but um, you know what? The game works, so... I'm not going to press it any further, but I'm just kind of wondering if I should have gone with the other uh, <laughs> the other auction on, on Amazon. It was the same price. I just fell for it. I was like, oh, I could get a, another free game if I like, get expedited shipping with the other guy. Um, so, yeah, I, <laughs> I got the game. It works. Um, the manual's kind of in a rough shape, but... Ugh, what are you gonna do? I mean, that's the risk you run by going off Amazon. Yeah, that's the that's the major problem with Amazon with their sellers is you never you don't see the actual uh, photo. They you can't put a photo and post it and show you what the item actually looks like. They just have a stock photo for everything. Uh, at least I believe that's the way it is. I, anyway, I never it, you're you're always taking a chance. You always just have to go by the description when you're doing going by uh, buying something used off a seller on Amazon. And that kind of sucks. They need to update it, I think. Uh, lastly, went to Video Games... I've been calling it Video Games Etc., but I believe the real name of the store is called Video Games Then and Now. The reason I call it Video Games Etc. is because that's what the sign says. But when I get the receipt, and actually when they were at Midwest Gaming Classic, they were listed as Video Games Then and Now. So I'm going to start trying calling them by their real name, I believe, Video Games Then and Now. 
I picked up a couple more of the uh, Super Nintendo um, dust covers for for them. They're, they're 50 cents a piece, but I always buy every single one of them every time I see it. And then I always I bought uh, I always buy some of these too, especially since now that I'm out of them. Uh, the uh, regular NES sleeve covers. And this is a decent price. You get I can get them for twenty five cents there, and I believe they sell them for more than that on um, on eBay. <clears throat> I might be mistaken on that, but of course I picked up a couple games while I was there. Uh, for I, some Master System games, I still I didn't have. Uh, got uh, Reggie Jackson Baseball. I mean, this is very very nice condition. Um, you know, manual looking really good. Cartridge looking really good. Uh, it was. Uh, two ninety nine, not bad price, and um, got Joe Montana football. Didn't have this one either, and I'm, you know, maybe one day I can actually complete my uh, Sega Master System collection. I think I'm less than twenty games away, actually, and that's why I kind of picked these up when I see them. And this was uh thirteen ninety nine. I don't think I'll actually complete it. I think I'll come close. There are a couple games that are really, really, really expensive. Uh, Buster du Douglas Boxing, I think, is the most expensive and rarest of the bunch. Uh, but, you know, I'm not too keen on completing it. But if I happen to come really close, who knows? Um, for Atari 5200, I picked up Gorf. $5 Gorf on the 5200. Got one of those weird CBS cartridges. Also on a weird CBS cartridge, we have Wizard of War uh, for $6.99. Now, I kept passing this one up. For the 5200, because I have Wizard of War for the Atari 8-bit computer. And it's practically the same game, except you could use a better controller on the Atari 8-bit contr controller. But for some reason, I love this game so much that I, I just broke down and I bought it <laughs> when I was there. Uh, yesterday, actually, it was. Saw a couple of interesting um, Atari 2600 games. Now, I'm going to say I passed on an Atari 2600 game called uh, Combat 2. And I actually looked it up in my phone while I was there, and it's a uh, reproduction of a, a reproduction of a prototype cartridge that never was actually released by Atari. Uh, and they wanted twenty bucks for it, but I figured, um, you know what, I'm not that interested. I looked up screenshots and everything. I really wasn't that interested in it, and I was like, I'll pass on it, even though. It's a reproduction cart, and it's just sitting on the shelf there. Uh, but I did pick up. Uh, King Kong for the 2600. Just it was the it, the way the cartridge is blue and and the really goofy King Kong that's on this cover here. I paid uh, 12.99 for that one, and I picked up pretty, I guess, um, good game from what I've heard uh, on other systems. At any rate, I know this is on the Atari 5200 and ColecoVision. Really wasn't aware of an Atari 2600, but I picked up a uh, minor. 2049er starring who's that bounty bob starring bounty bob and that was uh 14.99 I, I don't know why i like these tiger vision carts uh they got that weird uh indent for no reason i guess to help you pull out the cartridge or something uh <laughs> same thing with the king kong one <clears throat> and i picked up a sealed copy of meltdown for the atari 7800 a light gun game that i did not have uh, for some reason, I passed up on Barnyard, Barnyard something. I can't remember the name of it. That was also a light gun game, uh, but this was uh, seven ninety nine. Now this is sealed, but I'm pretty sure this might not be factory sealed. Um, could be, but I don't know. The, the thing that gives it away is this this flap here that that you hang on the wall. But you know, I don't know. Like this might be not factory sealed and just resealed. Uh, but doesn't matter if it's as long as it's complete for eight bucks. It's not bad. And finally, when I got there, uh, they had a thing in the glass case, a game in the glass case. I took a picture of it. Uh, my wife was at work. I sent it to her. I was like, "Hey, look at this. It's it's forty dollars. Should I buy it?" She responded back, "Yes, all capitals. I'll pay you back. Pay, get it. Custer's Revenge." <laughs> On the Atari 2600, uh, $40. Uh, now, the reason I asked her is many, many, many years ago, they used to have a copy of Beat 'em and Eat 'em, and I think it may have even been in the box. I don't remember how much they were asking for it, uh, but we saw it, didn't buy it, and then the Anger Video Game Nerd did his episode on those uh, 
of those adult twenty six Atari 2600 games. And um, then when we went back, they didn't have it anymore. So there's this running joke when uh, every time we go to the store, she, she asks, she goes, you should ask them if they have beat them and eat them. I'm like, no, I'm not that interested in getting the game. But they happen to have this right on, on the shelf out in the open. So, and it, it, like, yeah, you know, it's just a weird ass picture right there on the on the cartridge. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, the probably most politically incorrect uh, Atari 2600 game in existence, <clears throat> and those are the pickups. Uh, oh yeah, of course. Um, did download a new, um, not a new game, but an update to Pinball Arcade uh, yesterday. So there's an update available. Two new pay- tables available on my Android phone. I'm assuming they're available for the uh, iDevices as well. Uh, Circus Voltaire and Funhouse now available. $5 for to hit, just to buy both tables, which is what I did. Uh, still no updates for the PS3 or Xbox 360 versions. Those should be coming out fairly soon, I would think. Um, but that's what I've been doing, too, is I've been playing... Um, I played a lot of games yesterday for Crow Plays videos. I won't give away what I've been playing. Well, I, I did play all four tables in the Pinball Arcade. I'll give away that. But I also played some Commodore 64 games and some Astrocade games since I got that work in. So I'll uh, be editing those videos shortly soon. There's three more Crow Plays from, that, from before, and then we'll get into this stuff that I just recently played. Um, I... Thought I would be able to finish Uncharted 2 yesterday, but I played so many other games yesterday, I never got to it. Did I say Uncharted 2? I meant to say Uncharted 3. I, I'm pretty damn close to the end of that, and I'll be able to finish that shortly. And I was going to uh, talk about what I thought about the game, or, or the, the whole series in general, but I'm going to wait till I actually finish that. Maybe next time I'll do that. Um, I've also been working on the pinball machine. Uh, I said I was going to take the whole thing apart. Might not take every single little piece apart, but I definitely need to take everything off the top apart so I can, uh, like, wax down the uh, the play field. It's really dirty. I'm going to insert in some footage right here of what that table looks like now. I actually took this apart, or worked on it, rather, last weekend, uh, just for a couple hours, and I really haven't touched it since then. Uh, I guess I just have to be in the mood to do it. But... While I was working on it, I noticed a couple f- fuses under the table that had been that looked like they're corroded, and that might actually be what's causing my problem with the sound and everything. I'm, I don't know. I don't know for sure. Uh, the pinball machine does act weird, and I th- it might be those fuses. Those are the only things off the top of my um, <clears throat> my head that looked really wrong with it. Uh, also, I noticed one piece in the inner or the outer ramp loop. There's a plastic piece for that. Part of it's broken, and that might be why I was having such a hard time uh, shooting the ball around the loop because it was because it looked like the ball had bashed through it. So if I and um, if you don't hit it just right, it won't go around the loop. Now, I mean, there's shots that I've been taking. It looked like it should go around, but what it's actually happening is getting caught in the part where the plastic's missing, and uh, that's why it's been such a hard time getting that one loop. Uh, so all I need is like a little piece of plastic, I guess, just to. Uh, to repair that little spot there, and it'll be fine. Uh, other than that, I really haven't worked on it that much. Uh, maybe sometime in the future, I'll continue what I'm doing. Um, all right, and uh, da, da, da. oh yeah, I was going to talk about uh, physical game copies versus actually just downloading the game. Uh, now, the reason I'm going to start talking, I'm going to talk about this a little bit. I've talked about it a little bit in the past, but it seems like an issue that's been a bit bigger uh, now, and a lot of more people are talking about it, uh, particularly because EA uh, had said they were going to uh, discontinue support for Rock Band, on, I think it was like the iPhone or iPad or something like that, and um, but they still had it for sale, and. I think there's a, a misconception that when you're buying uh, a down, when you're downloading a game, you're buying a game. And uh, you know what? I, I happen to disagree with that. You're not actually buying the game. You don't own the game. What you're actually buying is the service to download the game to your system. Uh, if you think about it, like w- right down to what's actually happening, you're not getting anything. Basically, you're sending. You know, your system is sending a request. It's like, oh, I've made my payment. I'm sending a request to some server that will automatically transfer, you know, data 
to modify the hard drive that you already own to be able to install that game on your hard drive. Because think about it this way. When you buy, let's look at the Vita, okay? You have the Vita and all the games that you could buy in the store on the Vita. Physical copy, um, you can also download for the same damn price, okay? So if you go to the store and you buy a copy of the game, uh, you have the disc, you have the cartridge. If you Now, what it, it winds up doing is you put the, the cartridge in there and it kind of winds up installing a little you know, shortcut to the data on the cartridge. So, okay, if you delete that, you can still reinstall it yourself. You have the cartridge. You don't have to, you don't, you're not reliant on anybody else or any other system to get that data onto your PS Vita or whatever, or start the game or play the game again. However, if you download the game, you don't get anything extra. All you're doing is, you, you, on your memory card, you're rewriting the information on the memory card. You're just rearranging the bits and bytes on your memory card for the system to recognize a game and be able to play the game. Now, if you delete that again, if you delete that game and you want to play it again or you want to install it again, you're reliant on the system to be able to send you that data again. And if that system doesn't exist, you're not getting your game again. Or you don't have connection. If you don't have a connection, if you don't have any way to access that service, they can't give you the game again. And that's the real difference. Physical copy, um, for the most part. I mean, there's some other, you know, little bit issues. Even, even like Duke Nukem, I had the physical copy of that. But it still went on Steam and I was able to download updates and everything. It basically taking the disk and installing it from the disk to the hard drive rather than downloading it where you're reliant on the service to give you the information. So really, the difference between the physical copy and downloading the game is that with the physical copy, you're able to install the game yourself. With the downloaded copy, you're reliant on the service to give you the data. That is the real difference between physical copies and downloaded copies and that is the reason why physical copies are better. You actually own it. Also, if you want to take that physical copy and give it to somebody else, you're done with it, you can do that. You can't do that with downloaded copy. I mean, look at the Wii. When the Wii first came out, I was like, oh, look at all these virtual console games that I don't have. And I downloaded, I don't know, maybe about 10 of them. Well, now I actually have physical copies for the actual systems for those games. What can I do with those downloaded copies now? I'd love to be able to give them to something, somebody else, but I can't. They're just stuck on my Wii. That is the problem. And I think in a few more years, it'll become a bigger problem when you know companies don't want to support games anymore. I mean, think, look at Hexic HD. Hexic HD came on my Xbox 360. However, I don't think you could buy it or download it from the uh, Xbox Live Store. I mean, I could be wrong, but that has happened so many times already, and it's just going to be a bigger problem. It's like, well, I bought, you know, you're buying this service to be able to get the game, and I'm guessing it's an unlimited service as long as they're able to provide that for you. But as soon as they stop, they say, oh, we're not offering this anymore. You can't get it anymore if you need it. That is the problem. And... Um, with that, I'm going to move on to shout out. Uh, this person I've been I've been following for a long time, a couple of years. It's Jerry Terrifying. Uh, he does some awesome reviews, awesome videos, but most awesomely of all, he does the Mondo Coolcast. So check out his website, MondoCoolcast.com. He does a uh, podcast uh, called Mondo Cool, I guess Mondo Coolcast or whatever. Same as the website name. And uh, he does that live, actually, every Saturday night. So if you're free Saturday night, check out, um, you know, MondoCool.com. Go enter in the chat. You can chat along. He reads comments uh, during the podcast. If you can't be there, like I am oftentimes not able to be there, uh, he makes the episode available for download rather shortly the next week. Uh, so I, you know, some listen to it, and it's pretty damn awesome. I mean, there's a lot of uh, podcasts kept. Not podcasts. That would be meow, 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 meow. I mean, some people might find that entertaining, but I can't understand what cats are saying half the time. But 
uh, yeah, uh, he does the podcast every week, usually. Uh, barely misses anymore. He, um, he, I think he missed one week so far this year. Uh, but that was beyond circumstances, beyond his control. Uh, but awesome, awesome podcast. He's been doing it for over two years already. Uh, I know there's a lot of podcasts. I said it again, podcasts. Ha <laughs> ha! Podcasts out there nowadays. I mean, there's a lot of them. And I <laughs> I had trouble like keeping up with one of them. But then I get used to that. I was listening to two of them. And now I'm trying to keep up with four of them. It's just really hard to do, and I have to do it at work. So, <laughs> I'm not one of these days. It's gonna the ceiling's gonna fall through, and I'm not gonna be able to keep up anymore. But I'm gonna try to. So, but Mondo Coolcast this is my number one pick so far, aside from uh, Operation Kill Screen and whatever else. I don't know. Whatever, whatever I say, you know, uh, whatever I'm in the mood for, I always like listening to Jerry Terrifying on the Mondo Coolcast, and I think you will too. Check him out, and I'm gonna shut up because I'm done. Bye. <laughs> they got into port and everyone was okay. They went out for lunch and felt better. <laughs>